If you don't know what you're listening to, welcome to the Thought Crimes podcast. On Thought Crimes, we discuss the hardest parts of our behavior to deliver tactics to take control of our behavior and our lives. On this show, we cover burnout, personality, sleep, neuroticism, and more. Uh, Today, I'm joined by both Tyler, my co-founder, and Dr. Nicole Andriata. Uh, She's an executive coach for entrepreneurs and executives, helping them find their gifts and purpose in life, leveraging the scientific discipline of positive psychology. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and thanks for joining us, Tyler, as well. I'm always excited to be here. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm excited to be here too. So my first question, just to jump right in, is before you became an executive coach, you spent a lot of time working with patients at a brain rehabilitation center. Could you kind of elaborate on your early career and that experience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, It was actually 30 years. So I started at 19 years old. Um, I answered an ad. Um, I needed a summer job. I didn't get the hostess job at the Olive Garden. <laughs> and so um, I always use that as an example of like a closed door, like thank goodness, because I got a newspaper because that's what you did then. And it said, if you want a job in healthcare, and at the time I thought I was going to be a speech pathologist, um, you know, PTOT speech, whatever, this is a great entry level job for you. And it was at the um, Center for Neuroskills of Brain Injury Rehab. And so off I went, not knowing that it would completely um, shape my life. And um, I was just um, an average student, um, Not didn't, didn't know what I was, you know, I didn't really, hadn't found myself. And I, I started working there and working with patients and seeing it was an inpatient post-acute brain injury rehab. So those are people who um, are medically stable, but still are working on all their activities of daily living and learning to redo everything to be able to go back into their lives. And so um, I just, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, what people were capable of, you know, learning to walk again, learning to talk again, turning um, all it's, so many things. Right. So I'd come home at 19. I lived at, I was with my mom and be like, I'm doing rehab. And I, you know, and I, I just found this part of myself, um, at a young age. So I, I stay, stayed connected to that. And I grew up, you know, going back there for summer job, um, went there and worked as a clinic aide after undergrad, went back there after my master's, worked as a therapist, and then ultimately came back there as the director of rehab, where I was um, in a leadership for, position for quite some time, over a decade, um, and really connected with positive psychology from a leadership perspective by that point. Cool. Yeah, thanks. That's really cool. And then um, you ended up becoming an executive coach. What was the path from director of a rehab to executive coach? Well, I would have never known. So I loved my career. So it wasn't that um, like I was inspired and I was getting to use my strengths. It was all the good things. Um, But like so many people, I think particularly now, but this was right before COVID, um, my mom um, at 69 was diagnosed with breast cancer and died six months later. Um, And she had been um, retired for a really short time and had been like, just lived a life of service. She was a teacher, but she was the kind of teacher that we all need in the world, you know, and just, yeah. and um, it just, I mean, like, like, like death can, like just made me reconsider everything. And I thought um, that I was really proud of the life of service she le- lived. And I was proud of what I had done, but that maybe I could have a little more fun too. My job was inpatient. It was 24 hours a day. It was my life. And so, um, so that's kind of like, like so many people during COVID right now, people are reconsidering like a balance in life and all of that. So it, it came out of that. And then it was like, okay, um, how can I take what I've learned 
some of how I dealt with that kind of trauma too, um, for tra- traumatic for me, um, and share it with others. So I had all this brain experience in neuro rehab and understanding neuroplasticity. I had leadership experience. Um, I'm a therapist, obviously I have a background in psychology and thought, well, I have something to share and I didn't know exactly how it was all going to take shape, but here I am and I love it. So, um, yeah. Do you mind if I throw kind of like a, a bit of a zag, uh, in the works? What's on? That's not a phrase, but I'm, I'm really curious about, um, basically that's a really, I don't have a better word, but that's pretty gnarly, right? That's like a quick path to a, a tragedy, right? That's like a short amount of time to deal with the grief. Um, did you find like, how do you think of positive psychology in, in that, right? Like, where do you find the positive psychology of grief, uh, of something that's tragic, of something that happens fast, traumatic, yeah. right? You were use the word trauma, it's a traumatic experience. Yeah. Oh my God. That's such a good question. Um, so I learned a lot about positive psychology and I can tell you at the top, uh, so two, two things that makes me think of one, if I'm, if I'm just acting as a coach right now, I'm going to mm. tell you that when you know your character strengths and when you use them intentionally um, and mindfully and you, you practice them when your resources are down, it's going to help you build resilience. It's going to give you the energy. It's going to help you. Right. But from a personal perspective um, and reflecting back on when I was going through it and I wasn't able, I mean, hindsight's 20 to 20, um, I see how I could have done better in that. So I'll, I'll give you, this is the clearest example. So one of my character strengths is kindness. And when my mom was sick and she was navigating the hospital system, I was angry all the time, right? Like I was just, and I, I mean, I wasn't, I, and, um, I, I was using my leadership skills, which is another one of my character strengths, but I just felt aggressive. I just felt angry. And my mom, um, was, you know, all, I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting this question. I mean, so, sorry. so yeah, yeah. see, no, so, so this is how it works. Um, I saw my mom using her kindness, like even in like tremendous pain and asking questions of the nurses and, oh, this is Ralph. He plays the um, saxophone, Nicole, and his, all his kids play instruments. And I was like, I don't care. I was like, mom, like, how are you being so nice? I'm just so angry. Mm. Um, And then once I got through that and I was having perspective and I'm practicing this, I see that if I would have gone out of my way um, to do exactly what she was doing, or maybe even collaborated with her, say like, hey, we should bring the nurses a note or what could we thoughtful like, and that I would have felt energized by that you know but mm. I was telling myself that I had an excuse to not be kind but I, I'm kind for me because it makes me feel better <laughs> you know like I know understand that in a different way so I would if I were to go back and talk to that person I would have done intentional things I would have written notes I would have you know just been thoughtful um because I really needed that energy it's like because they, that anger was so unfamiliar to me and I would have gotten some balance through adversity. So I think, um, you, 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 so positive psychology gives you resources. So, you know, because those are the things that are most inherent and energetic to you. So you, you practice them and you literally get a reservoir, you know, of energy to deal, you know, with the stress. And so, um, it's definitely not about, um, like toxic positivity. It's very much about what knowing what fuels you and what can help you face adversity. That is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And we can feel your emotion. I mean, I, yeah, well, I wasn't trying to throw you a curveball. I was honestly yeah. just curious. Yeah, no, and yeah, for those who are listening, I'm sorry, that wasn't on my question list, but I, I love talking about it. It's a really good question. So yeah. we, we, well, life's real, you know, real, real yeah. things happen to people. And Connect, connecting this to like the the brain rehab work you were doing, I also lost my father when I was like 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 
12 years ago or no, 10 years ago, something like that. Um, and I was completely, like, our term for it is we're out of shape, right? It's so, like when we're acting in ways that aren't like yeah. related to the, the strengths or something. Right. And like looking at the list, I took your test and uh, looking at my list, I wasn't doing any of my top five. And I had like the best excuse, right? I like just set everything aside. I was like, you know what? I can be angry, lazy, whatever it is, because like this this thing just happened. And I'm curious because like I know brain oxygenation is related to like uh, the neurotic, ang anxious, depressed pathways in your brain. And I was working out significantly less, probably like less mentally active at that time. Do you, do you, do you see any dots connected to like, uh, emotionally traumatic events related to like brain a trauma or like, and, and I guess like minor needs for rehabilitation to get back to our strengths? Yeah. I mean, I mean, in a lot, a lot of ways, um, positive psychology is that I think, so we're all familiar with the word trigger, right? So like not in grief, like trigger, um, it's it's a a word used um pretty loosely sometimes right like trigger warning or whatever but we also know that it is an important clinical term like that is related to real trauma or like you know some of the things that we're talking about but either way it's speaking to the fact that there is um that without even consciousness at first our auto autonomic nervous system is sending out signals that there's danger or there's fear we're shutting down. We've got the cortisol, the neuroepinephrine all going off. Um, it's really hard on our nervous systems. Um, and in times of um, like, you know, a chronic illness or, or even grief over time, it's like that is on overdrive, you know, even when, and so um, positive psychology is this Deborah Dana came up with a term called glimmer, which is the opposite of trigger. Mm. And it's the micro moments um, that bring us calm, joy, peace. Um, but it's not, again, this, um, I mean, I like it. I like the sparkle part of it, but it is actually this, it's just as scientific, right? It's like a download of dopamine and serotonin and that when we clue in and we just take a moment to um like listen we I could hear birds chirping right outside my window and like um smile you know or um you know cup of coffee something that smells good um anything right so these things aren't these aren't um necessarily they could be connected to our char character strengths but they're more at what what sparks um, calm and contentment and peace and connection that can help combat those triggers and not thinking that, um, that, 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 that that's for balance. It's not to negate the trigger. It's not to, to ignore what's going on, but that we can soothe our ner nervous systems and we can create space for other, um, feelings rather than, <laughs> um, sadness and grief. Yeah. That's awesome. That was beautiful. Um, Tyler and I have talked about something really similar, which is, um, cause we're, we're also friends outside of work. We've been friends for like, you know, heard, yeah, yeah for, for like <laughs> a long time. Uh, and, uh, we, we've had a couple of conversations about the idea of like lifelines and death lines. Like if we're in our friendship promoting things that are actually, not only bad for us, but we don't even enjoy ultimately, why then are we then socially reinforcing these things in each other when we could be like, you, you have a series of choices, like let's go get blackout drunk or or let's go for a bike ride and then uh, go out on the river and like co coast down yeah. a river, right? Like, yeah. Okay, you're speaking positive psychology right now, right? Because we mm -hmm. there is like, you know, and it's the same about weaknesses. Like you can examine and spend energy considering why you're not good at something, you know, but the science is showing clearly that that time is so much better spent considering and focusing on what you're good at and figuring out how you're going to do more of it. Like it just, 
the momentum it, it grows exponentially like the 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 amount of joy success well-being all the good stuff is is there you know but um our culture um and and just speaking of you know our brains we have that negativity bias like we have that tendency to want um to ruminate on things that went wrong and we just don't ruminate enough on what went right yeah I don't even know the word for like, we have a word specifically for overthinking the negative qualities of an event in the past. It's like rumination is the word. I don't know. Like co- positive contemplation. We don't have that. We don't have the glimmer, right? They, they savor is one good word. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Savoring an experience. That's great. That's good. You know, to land on it and stick with it longer. Like we'll have a glimmer. Like, so if, if, like we connect over triggers, right? Like, like, oh, that triggered me again. This is not talking about real trauma therapy, but like how we use it socially lightly, like that triggered me. Um, but when someone's like, oh, that, that sparked a little joy with me in a meeting, like no one would say that, like, you know, like mm-hmm. oh, that just, that just rang true for me. Like that just felt mm-hmm. great. Like we don't story it. We don't talk about it. We don't grow it, but we're all ready to talk about um, something that, that, um, made us uneasy was so we're so much more comfortable with that even socially so that's one of the things that I I'm really wanting to do in my work is make um it more common and more comfortable to talk about what's going right yeah so I, have, I have a ahead, few questions on that one because <laughs> uh, I, I like getting into like the science of things too and you, you said that the science of this show is focusing on positivity is better Did, have you also looked into like the the social aspect of that positivity like you were just saying in a meeting is it related to like us valuing modesty so much like modesty is sometimes like related to our psychological well-being too right it's like not letting like not trying to shove how happy we are in other people's face because it might make them feel worse Mm -hmm. like how, how, how does or do those things relate so so that's interesting so what I, when when I talked about a response that would that might be really um, generous like that meant a lot to me like that that was really interesting that you said that so so when if if I had a glimmer or you know sometimes um, like I liked the way you phrased that when you phrased that it really resonated with me it felt true it felt authentic or you know just like if something the we know the opposite if someone said something and it 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 um, stirred something up in us, you know, social justice or that that's, you know, right or wrong or whatever, but like we, we wouldn't acknowledge or even story, like maybe if we don't say it out loud, something that, that um, resonated with us, um, that savoring or creating a story or saying, I think I, that made sense to me because it connected to this value or, or this strength or something that means something to me, like just stay with it a minute. Right. Because again, we will story why something made us mad, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but, but I get what you're saying, um, Tyler, like, um, I, yeah, I'm not, um, I know what you're saying that, um, if you're having a, having a good day, it's not like I'm on fire, but Mm -hmm. although I do think that we need more friends who you can do that with, like, right. Like maybe not like in a business meeting, like I'm winning, but, but, um, I really value the friendships who I can do that with. And it's not bragging. And it's just like celebrating a win or something that went well. Mm -hmm. And that I have friends who love that too. Like that we, like we want to hear the good stuff. Right. This is something just to share a little bit. I've, I've struggled with because I went through a a, a lot of hard stuff that, Get it, and it ties into what both of you guys are talking about, right? Um, the way Tyler expressed it was not expressing his top, top five strengths. You also said, right, giving yourself the excuse to be a jerk to other people. I totally have gone through things similar um, for longer than I realized, right? Like long periods. And one funny thing about positive psychology when I encountered it was I was in a very pessimistic, angsty, reject everything phase. And so I was like, well, being positive is corny or something, right? (laughs) Now I pursue it. But it's funny. It's funny that like that wholesomeness, like especially teens, they're like, ah, 
wholesome means not cool or something, right? Like corniness. Oh uh, yes, suffering has depth, right? Like <laughs> it has no depth. I, I I so relate to that. Like I, um, in fact, I mean, I I I, I do a lot, and I think um, actually. I didn't, I didn't, um, language, I didn't story it this way. When you asked me about, um, learning from the loss of my mom, that was part of it. It was that I really value that I work hard. I'm doing really like I'm in brain, you know, brain rehab. And it's like, I'm, I, I was valuing and also thought, yeah, like that was who I was and that I mattered because I was working really hard. And in other times that I, um, if I was having a deep conversation, it also was a, in my younger angsty days about suffering, you know, and like that, that made me deeper. <laughs> and, and you know what, like happiness um, is not a lack of depth. There's a lot of wisdom and gratitude and hope and like, um, love, you know, and those things are valuable. Like the, those, those things matter and they make, make life worth living. Um, so, but not at this, um, not ever at the sake of, of ignoring like the realities of life, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. it's just all about balance, you know, and, but I relate to that angsty thing. And I mean, and I actually, have a hard time currently still with it in that people who aren't really familiar with positive psychology think about that as, as, you know, toxic, you know, just that it means um, that you're saying that you're always happy. And, um, and the truth is that I found this work in the most meaningful way after coming through um the most suffering. It's like I would I, I I was experiencing some success because I was using my character strengths in my job, but I was using them more outwardly and I was sharing them, but like I didn't really understand um how I was taking care of myself with them. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and, I, and I and I was able to figure that out after. And that has really changed my life for the better. Well- that that's a perfect segue. I mean, we we've gone down this really interesting tangent. Um, I want I wanted to talk that you know we prepared some things that I, I really think are important to share with our listeners. Let's talk about this, like your gifts, right? Um, and finding them. Uh, can you talk to our audience a little bit about what you mean by that and what's the approach for uh, any given client, right? Finding their gifts, finding their character strengths. Well, for myself. Um, so my, in my earlier days, um, I had a a mentor and her name, um, is Linda and she was someone I had tremendous respect for. And I thought I really looked up to her. Um, and I was a clinic aide at CNS and I took, I've told you guys, I love this job. I took it really seriously. And, um, she had, everyone over in the department, um, for dinner one night. And, um, she was going around the table and she was telling each person something about them, you know, like a a toast or something. I was only 19. I wasn't drinking, but something sweet. And there was a girl who was my, um, that had the same job title as me that her name that was sitting next to me. And Linda turned to her and she said, um, Danielle, you are the most competent PT aide I have ever had, you know? And I was like, oh, it's my turn next. And, you know, I wanted, you know, positive feedback. I'm getting to character strengths, I promise. But, and she said to me, and Nicole, you're just like a breath of fresh air. And I cried all the way home. I was devastated. I was absolutely devastates me. I'm like, I want to be the most competent. I want to be smart. Mm. I want to be like, like have like this something of substance I was showing up. And, and so that, that single event made me say, I'm going to be more competent. I swear it with the seed was planted on getting my doctorate. Right. 
And so I went on all this journey to try and become competent. But meanwhile, like circle back and I learned my character strengths and I find out that kindness and love and social intelligence are my character strengths. I have leadership. Um, and, and so what she was telling me a uh, breath of fresh air that took me, um, that I would took offense to, I later learned were the things that really, I really have to offer. Like I am genuine. I'm generous with my time, my energy, my resources, my, I, um, am transparent. I'm courageous with, in terms of my honesty and, um, yeah, showing up authentically and genuinely social intelligence, you know, I know how to um, work um, amongst all different kinds of people and find ways to connect and have social rapport with, and at the time it was patients, you know, and my colleagues. And so I was doing this really fluidly and I was also thriving because I finally had a place where I, my kindness and love, um, love in, in as a character strength is just enjoying caring and sharing reciprocal relationships. So here I had patients every hour who needed my kindness, my love, and I was, I was thriving. Mm. You know? So, so what she was seeing was this young person, like in the flow of her life. <laughs> and like, so it was like, wow, what a breath of fresh air. Look at you. But I was like, how offensive, like I, I I, would, I want to be taken seriously, but she was literally witnessing someone like in on the right track, you know, like in a job where, you know, where I could use my character strength. So um, and and as a coach, I can, too, you know, and um, so that's those are my um, character strengths and um, they they can over and under function, you know, so in terms of personality psychology, Tyler and I talked a little bit about that. We can talk about them used optimally, but part of understanding them is what it looks like. Like for me, when my honesty is overly functioning, I'm too blunt and it can be hurtful and um, keep, you know, <laughs> catch someone off guard. And if I'm under utilizing my honesty, then I'm not being courageous and speaking up about something that's important to me and I'm going to feel low in energy. Mm -hmm. So um, there, so I've learned a lot about the over and under functioning of my strengths and, and what it feels like to be using them optim optimally. Um, and it's yeah. a constant, yeah, constant balance. <laughs> yeah. That, that resonates quite a bit. Like we, we talked about this a little you know, yesterday, but almost the same feedback. It's like, uh, I used to get yearly when I have like my employee reviews is that like, Oh, he's so positive and he just keeps the energy up and people like motivated. Uh, and I was in a highly technical, like leadership position. And I was like, Oh, so they're saying I'm not technical enough. I need, <laughs> I need, I need, I need to go yeah. work on my technical, like you hear what's not there. So I'm curious, like even in, uh, and just to give listeners like a little more detail, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, Peter and I took the, um, Dr. Andriata's test and it gives you 24, uh, of your strengths, uh, rank ordered and which ones are most, uh, powerful or, or, or most you most represent you or most expressed by you. Let me make sure I, I, I clarify that it's not my, my, um, it's the via. So it's mm -hmm. the, um, it is, you know, a scientifically valid, um, assessment that was created in positive psychology through via um so it's you know it's not not mine so the okay. the, via. the test the test you use in your practice yes, yes it is. sorry yeah. thank thank you for correcting me um i'm curious even in the realm of guiding people in the world of positive psychology like i found myself going to the bottom of the list and then see, yes, you know what i'm so saying natural. like seeing like oh so, so you're saying i'm not brave huh yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah you, everybody does, i mean that? not everybody but i think oh, yeah it's there is a very big tendency to do that and it's also because i work with so many leaders if they don't have leadership in their top five it's like oh my gosh and and great leaders don't have 
necessarily have leadership as their character strength. They know what their strengths are and they use them, leverage them good. And they're good at recognizing other strengths and partnering with those people like period, like you don't have to, but um, we all, to your point, we have all 24 character strengths. We, we have them all. And even though you and I don't have bravery in our top five, we've had to be brave. We can be. The point is, is that when we are brave, that we have to gather up energy and resources and spend it on that when we need to. And the top five are the things that are so effortless and energizing to us that, that, that we can't help but be these things. So we don't have to try. And when we do use them in intentionally or in a new way, then it's just literally like tapping into energy. Like it's so that we can um, like you're, you have uh self-regulation, like I got to use my other things so that I can be um, more structured. Like, you know, mm-hmm. if I want to make sure that I, go to yoga in the morning, you know, whatever. I want to like be disciplined about, I, um, I tap into, yeah, some of the other things, uh, my other strengths to make sure that I can follow through on some habits that I want to do. So, so we have all 24 character strengths, even the bottom one you can do. Let, um, and, and we and and really the top five, which is the signature strengths, are just saying that those things are the most energizing, most effortless, effortless, and inherently who you are. And they remain pretty consistent. Sometimes they switch up a little bit, but like um, not a a great deal. Right, and that also kind of answers a question I was gonna ask, which was. Um, so say so someone could have like higher score, like just say like all the same results as me, but higher scores on all of them um, and have like the same order. But I guess it, it doesn't matter. It's the relative ranking of how you express well, those. Well, and sometimes to your point, they can flip. But what how I like to think of what you just said, it's a really good question, is th- think of it um, as um, instruments and like, so you could have the same instruments, but like one is like playing louder or like the way the tone, like the way you're playing it and the way they harmonize. So at any given time, it's like, you know, you're like a um, choreograph, uh, no, a conductor and one's like, bring in the leadership, dong, you know, and then <laughs> something lower here. And it's like, you can use them in harmony and, mm-hmm. and they kind of play and you can become really skilled at this. So we, we do it naturally anyways. But as you really become to understand these, as you guys would say, superpowers, you can um, do that a little more mindfully and intentionally, which um, is empowering. It's also to to resonate with this even more a relief, um, which is this has been the biggest change uh, from our work for me personally. And it was it's gratifying to see the correlation uh, you know, you know, it's like we have all the science backing our our assessment, but then if you do these other ones and they're equally valid and then and they overlap, you're like, oh, that's nice. Like, okay, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, com- we're not crazy here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? It's the opposite of gaslight, so it's reaffirming, right? Um, and so uh, the biggest relief for me is I was trying to fit this shape really similar to the the same story. Um, you both were expressing of someone says this and I hear that like you're good at oh yeah you're really funny I'm like yeah but that doesn't mean you take me seriously or whatever it is whatever the thing is mm-hmm. and the no, knowing that like even if you're totally scatterbrained like in my case right totally scatterbrained and um interested in everything breadth first all the time wide open field for ideas that when wrangled can be just as useful as someone i mean well yeah me and tyler working together who's able to just focus like a laser right list things down and like knock them off a million percent a million percent so you haven't taken it yet but i i can curiosity is definitely in yours right i i took it i took it uh just before last night curiosity is number six my top five just for the the sake of the conversation is number one is kindness two is love 
three is humor, four is creativity, five is gratitude, and then six is curiosity. So curiosity just uh, almost made the cut. So <laughs> yeah. I think what you were describing there it was your creativity. So, I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes we think of, you know, art and science of creativity, but it's also very much about being able to come up with multiple solutions to a problem. And the key in that it's a gift is that they're actually useful. Mm. You know, so you can fire out like, you know, like we could do this, we could do this. And then someone like Tyler can come in and maybe say, okay, well, this could be what gets in the way and like start fleshing out like the details. Um, I've partnered um, uh, with, um, so creativity isn't my top five, but I lend more to, um, throwing out ideas. And I've had people um, come in that um, were trying to put legs underneath it. And at first I would think that they were being um, pessimistic, like, mm. or raining on my parade. Like that was a great idea. And, and once we, in terms of teams and what I do, what I found out with this person, what I've helped with other teams to see is the value in both, right? Like you want that creative person. You want that person who's generating ideas and there's momentum and, and you don't feel stuck. And then mm -hmm. the person with judgment um, or, or, or prudence, like is more going to measure the risk, help come to the optimal decision and the idea, like, and in concert together, you know, um, that's how innovation happens. And that's how, yeah, you get the best outcomes on teams and, and partnerships too, like friendships like this and, in 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 um, marriages and, you know, so, so instead of feeling like, so sometimes I would be like, oh, I should have thought of that. And then mm -hmm. I would, then this, this breath of pressure, like I'm, I'm not smart enough for this conversation. I miss that. Um, being like, oh, instead of being, oh, thanks. Okay. That's a good idea. Like I'm going to take a note of that and not letting it take wind out of my sails, you know? So yeah. Yeah. And gosh, that, uh, this, I just connected some dots actually like a moment getting slightly emotional because I've made those mistakes. And then looking at these top five, I was like, if I had realized, well, the reason I made the mistake is because I was leading with love, kindness, and humor. I didn't want to, make the hard decisions I had to. So I delayed them. It was like, oh, like, okay, actually those mistakes make perfect sense of why I was pulling back, holding back. And then it cost, it, you know, it, it, it ended up costing, but like, and then I would beat myself up like, oh yeah, like you said, I should have known, I should have known, I should have done it earlier, should have done this, should have done that. But it's like, oh, well, okay, this is why I didn't, I understand it, right? That's really clear. You know, your top three, um, are are such significant examples of incredible leadership strengths that now more and more in leadership they're talking about love and leadership more now than ever like people want to feel connection they want to feel seen they want to feel um a, you know appreciated humor is the most um the shortest distance between two people mm -hmm. you know in terms of um gaining people's attention and feeling connected to you so when when some when you share a laugh with someone, they assume that they know you much better than they do, and they remember you differently, and you put people at ease. And so it's an incredible leadership tool, you know. Um, and so, anyways, yeah, I love love and humor. I I, I had a CEO have humor that I did, and at first she um, she was like humor, like that's my number one. And we really were able to flesh this out because um, it puts people at ease. And that's also where speaking of creative creativity, where the best ideas come out, you know, is when people feel comfortable and um, yeah, it makes people feel like they know the real, they know, know you, but you know, like you're just like them sort of thing, that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. great and a leader. Yeah. So, this is, um, we, yeah, I want to circle back to a question we didn't get to, which I'm personally have been curious about this whole time, which is why entrepreneurs, why executives, right? What, why was this the place that you found was like fertile ground to sort of start planting these seeds? Because I want more leaders like you, Peter. Like, I think that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, honestly, <laughs> yeah, no, with love and kindness, it's like, there, there's a ton of ton out there, right? Strength-based leadership has been gaining momentum for 30 years. Um, but a lot of times, to your point, 
um, where parts where you were holding these essential parts of you back, you know, and um, thinking that that's how you were going to get advantage by trying to work harder at bringing some other parts of yourself forward is for leaders to really understand um, what may be considered soft skills are what matter most, you know, and how to leverage them and, and build them. And, and to be honest, I started out focusing on women. So, um, and it was because of that, like my early idea was that women more often consider their strengths soft skills and, and I wanted to help them understand, um, and leverage that their strengths, um, in leadership. But then I, you know, I found out that, that I was off. That is really not about gender. Like you mm-hmm. being a perfect example that you of um, of understand how important it would be for you to to understand the value of your kindness, right? Um, and to leverage that to for your podcast and to be successful for your relationships to be successful, etc. So, um, so I changed my mind. I'm gender inclusive. Right. Okay, sounds good. All I heard was. Uh, that I'm just like a woman. That's all. That's it. No, 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 you didn't. <laughs> just kidding. That's some of the humor coming in. Um, so, uh, this is so awesome. I'm, I'm just buzzing. Um, we are unfortunately though winding down on time. So I do want to pull it in and talk a little bit about, um, you know, what is next for you? What, 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 what do you want to share? Like, what's the most important thing to get across to the people listening to this in particular? Maybe they're excited. They want to take the test. Can they get sure they email you, call you on your phone, <laughs> right? Uh, yes. You know, yeah. um, what, what's Definitely. next? Yeah. Um, so this is the great news. Um, the VIA, VIA um, survey is free. It's for research. People it um, have taken it across the entire world and it's collecting um, data for the science of human flourishing, which means what makes life worth living. So you can take that um, and it's free. It takes about 15 minutes and instantly um, you're going to get all 24 of your character strengths in order. Um, your top five are the ones that we were calling your signature strength, which means these in the they're the most influential on your happiness. And they're sort of um, not sort of they are your gifts, your inherent mm-hmm. gifts. If you want to come through me, my website is um, Dr. Nicole Andreata, A-N-D-R-E-A-T-T-A dot com. And there is a link in my website where you could take the survey. And if you do, I'll get your results um, and we connect. We can connect. Um, I love to do um, an unwrap your gifts, I call it, which means we just spend an hour and a half and we go through your top five and really unpack um, what they are, um, how you can leverage them, how you're currently already using them, how you could use them more um, to bring more um, success, happiness, well-being, all the all the things in your life. Um, I'm also really invested right now in working with um, medical providers, um, like nurses, community of nurses, just with all of that's happened post pandemic and just the state of um, yeah, people are leaving healthcare altogether. And I'm kind of blending my experience from working with leadership, hospital leadership and sharing this um, to help um, address burnout in, in with nurses and in healthcare. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so that's kind of, that's, you know, every, the V is for everyone. The V is for everyone. So either come through my website or just go straight to them, find out your strengths. Um, and uh, I'm here for anyone who wants to learn more about them and, and talk about how they can leverage them in their life. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, Tyler, yeah, Tyler, did you have any last questions? I wanted to make sure you get. Uh, oh, I mean, there's no last questions. There's just a longer list than we started with. <laughs> <laughs> but also just for listeners, we'll include all of... Uh, the links um, that were just mentioned in the description. So you don't have to have a memory like test later on. <laughs> Keep you trying to re-listen right. to this. 
Can I say one more thing? Because I just looked to my left to a note and I said, I, 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 I had this written that if I just said this one thing, it would be really important. And it was all the way back when like, what did you learn in neuro rehab or how's that connected to positive psychology it is this? Like I was able to witness countless times people who were not able to walk, it's the easiest example, relearn how to walk. And they did that through practicing and building new neural pathways to be able to get the signals from their brain to their muscles. And, and they relearn to walk, right? And if people can relearn to walk or to recognize symbols or to speak again, to swallow, you can learn how to be happier. Like it is just the same thing. You know, it's what you're focusing on. Like it is, it is neuroplasticity. Like you can create new neural pathways that are a committed to and more efficient at bringing you more life satisfaction, more well-being. It's not this abstract thing out. It is, you know, it is actually about neuroplasticity and rewiring your brain. So that's what I want to say. Yeah. And I think that's the perfect title for the episode. Yeah. You can learn to be happier. Love yeah. it. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nicole. This was absolutely uh, fantastic. I'm going to go Go for a jog or something. I feel right. so, so pumped. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, t- take care. Yeah, it's been okay. really fun. Thanks so much.